around Australia on the Oz Ethereal Network and across the world online. This is Supernatural Sexuality with Dr. Seabrook. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Supernatural Sexuality. I'm your host, Dr. Olivia Seabrook. Join me tonight as I take calls from listeners like you who have questions about their relationships or sexualities. Around Australia, your toll-free number is 1-800-975-711. And our international callers can always contact us via our guest line at Seabrook On Air. I've got to admit, the Death and Relationships Conference last week was such a fun time. But God, am I happy to be back in the studio. I was not expecting such big crowds. I ended up having to schedule two other meet and greet sessions that weekend to keep up with the demand. I saw so many people who have gotten so much from this show. It's certainly given me a new perspective on how my work helps people. Speaking of which, I think it's time to get to this week's calls. We've got our first caller up. You're on the air with Dr. Seabrook. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Dr. Seabrook. My name's Avery. I need some advice. That's what I'm here for, Avery. What's the issue? Well, I've been dating this woman for a few months, mostly long distance, and it's been going really well. And we've decided that we're going to meet up in person soon at her place. That sounds so good to hear. It sounds like the two of you are doing well. So why the call today? Well, the thing is, she's a Gorgon. Ah, I guess that's the reason for the long distance. Yeah, she lives in a really remote place, mostly gets things delivered online these days, and photos and video of Gorgons don't petrify people, so she has a really active social life online, especially with me. But we do want to meet up at her place, obviously. Obviously. So I'm just wanting to get some advice on how we can interact with each other in person without getting hurt. Well, first up, that's a really good attitude, wanting to have plans in place to mitigate the risks. I'm glad you've called tonight. Thank you. So the good news is that, as you pointed out, Gorgon petrification only happens with direct eye contact. So avoiding that eye contact is the best way to keep you safe. You can work to just keep your eyes down, but if she has mirrors in the house, you can always communicate visually through those. Although that's risky. It can be very easy to forget and turn around and need a sudden awkward hospital visit. Yeah, that's a good point. A safer option is to work with blindfolds. It's a lot safer because you certainly can't forget to use them when they're right on your face. So if you're willing to be blindfolded the whole time you're there, that's an easy option. But then I don't get to see her, you know? That is a big drawback, very true. But when it comes to safety, it's one of the most effective and cheap options. If you do have some money spare, there are some special goggles that you can get these days. They have digital screens in them linked to a camera, so you can see everything secondhand. They're pretty lightweight these days, not much bigger than a mobile phone. Just make sure you charge them each night you're there. Huh. I've never heard of that before. They're a pretty recent invention, but they are out there. If you go this route or any other route, honestly, the other important issue I want you to remember is to be a little careful during sex, if that's your plan. The goggles are great, but if they get knocked off, again, very awkward visit to the hospital to de-petrify you. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be very awkward. Indeed, and I'd absolutely recommend a backup blindfold anyway, at least for sleep and such. Also, there are a lot of fun games out there you can play with blindfolds. A lot of couples use blindfolds as a way of heightening other senses during sex. And there's no reason why you can't have some fun with your protective gear. If you need it, why not use it, you know? Yeah, I can see how that could work. Excellent. So does that help you out? Yeah, it, it does, actually. <laughs> sounds like I should go shopping pretty soon. It sounds like. Well, I hope you and your Gorgon friend have an excellent and safe time. Thanks for the call. I love when people think ahead on these sorts of things. A little bit of knowledge can save so much trouble in the long run, so it's always good to do a little research. Now, our next caller, Hubba, is on the line. 
Shannon tells me that they're using a text-to-speech device, so bear with us as we make sure that they have enough time to type out their answers. Hava, go ahead and tell me about your issue. Thanks, Dr. C. Brooke. Could you please not use imperatives? Imperatives. Just now you said, tell me about your issue. It's phrased kind of like a command. I'm very susceptible to commands. Of course, I called in because I want to tell you about the problem. I'm happy to tell you about the problem. I want your help. But later you might give me advice, and if you say it to me like an order, it gets really hard for me to disobey. Ah, sure. Of course. I'll keep that in mind. Pull me up if I phrase things as imperatives again. I'm afraid you just did it again. Sorry to be a pain. So I did. (laughs) I'll keep a closer ear out for that. Now I can't help wondering whether this is related to your issue. It is. You see, I am a golem, hence the typing. Ah, of course. During my studies in Germany, I met a few golems who didn't speak using their mouths, I don't want to drag you too far off topic explaining the basics, but for our listeners who may not be aware, my understanding is that many golems are created without the capacity for verbal speech. That's right, Doctor. Some of our creators didn't see the need to let us talk. Lots of us were originally created to work, or to protect, or to serve someone else's needs. That was a long time ago for me, but it has to do with my problem. Go on. Uh, Sorry, I mean, I'm curious to know more. I met this human, and we've started going out. It's been wonderful, but confusing. How so? They say the nicest things about me. They're hard to believe, but I'm trying. Or at least I'm considering them. Like I said, I'm very malleable. It's hard to know how to take a compliment when you can feel it shaping you. It sounds like there are some identity issues going on. Oh boy, absolutely. But also, my partner likes me and wants to be good to me. And that's great, but it's actually the biggest problem. Hmm. It can be hard to enjoy receiving when we've got a long history of being expected to just give, right? Definitely part of it, but I'm getting better at that. Hang on, I typed out the explanation in advance. Let me just load it up. One of the hard parts about being a free golem is that golems are created to serve, sometimes even to serve a lofty goal, but not a lofty goal that we choose. That makes it hard for us to know what we want. I've done work I'm really proud of because of what I was made to do, but it's complicated, and in my personal life, it's easy to default to just following typical rules or pleasing others. My partner is really good at not pressuring me and not taking advantage of how much I want to please them. They want to please me too, but I don't know what I like or what I want. Everything, hobbies, choosing a restaurant, even the physical side of things. It all feels like I'm constantly having to make decisions, and I don't know where my preferences come from or how to hear them. Sometimes I second-guess everything, or just ask them to choose, just to get it out of the way. Sometimes choice feels impossible. I just want to know how to tell what I want. Hava, what you're describing is a classic struggle for beings who haven't always been free, or who find it hard to get in touch with their desires. It's wonderful that you're in a good place to experiment with choice and control and someone supportive in your corner. But you've explained beautifully how a supportive person isn't always enough, especially when you're second guessing yourself. I have an idea. I'm going to take a second to think so I can be careful to avoid instructions when I say this. Thank you. You'd be amazed how hard it is for some people. I'm actually remembering that one of my family therapy instructors taught me to use exactly that kind of phrasing with shy or reluctant clients. It just goes to show, you never stop learning. Anyway, I think it could help to stop trying to figure out exactly 
what you want before you ask for it. You're looking for certainty, and I think you may want to try focusing on curiosity instead. Approach, I mean, you could try approaching desires like a scientist or like a child. It's like when we're very young and first exploring the world, we try a bit of everything and our focus is on learning and sensation. We aren't looking to be sure, we're just looking. Do you have some time alone coming up? I do. Okay, perfect. One thing you could do is sit and think up lots of lists, uh, lists of food, lists of outdoor activities, games, conversation topics, even sex acts, and see which idea sparks curiosity. You wouldn't have to feel sure that you want anything on any list, only that it feels interesting and not actively upsetting. Then you could try those things out, alone or with your partner or with someone else, and just see what you notice, all the details and feelings, without pressing yourself to make a final judgment. You can stop any of them any time, or try variations if something sparks good feelings. How does that sound? That makes a lot of sense. It sounds a lot less stressful than freaking out in front of my partner's family about whether I really like chicken soup or I just think I ought to like chicken soup. Oh, that sounds tough. It can take a while to decide on our tastes. A lot of us are less sure than we admit. It's all about discovery, not about being sure. Good luck, Hava. I hope this helps. Me too. Thanks, Dr. Seabrook. Thanks for the call. It can be difficult, not just for golems, to know what it is you really want. Hava is absolutely doing the right thing here, working to find out what that means for them. Often the only way to find out what you want is to try enough things to learn. So don't be afraid to experiment a little, if that's what you need. This is Supernatural Sexuality. I'm Dr. Seabrook. Time for a quick ad break. See you when we return. Welcome back to Supernatural Sexuality. I'm Dr. Seabrook. Let's get back to the calls. You're on the air with Dr. Seabrook. How can I help? Hi, Dr. Seabrook. My name is Ava. Thank you for taking my call. I'm, uh, not bad, but not great. I guess you wouldn't be on my line if everything was great, Ava. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What can I help you with today, Ava? I think I'm in love with my best friend. She's the most radiant person I've ever met. Like, like when she smiles, it lights up the whole world. Oh, how lovely. And does she know? No, of course not. And that's not the whole problem, Doctor. She's a human, but I'm a vampire. And I'm asexual. I'm double weird here. Now, now, Ava. You're very far from weird. I've seen plenty of happy and healthy human vampire relationships. And asexual has never meant unlovable. Don't count yourself out so easily. There's actually one other thing. Go on. So, like, she smells really good. I feel like that guy in those vampire romance books because she smells so good and I really want to taste her blood. But not in a sexual way. It's not a sexy thing. But I also have a crush on her. It's, it's really confusing. I can certainly imagine. Blood drinking has definitely been sexualized in popular media, so it's no wonder you're feeling so confused about that urge conflicting with your sexuality. Yeah, I'd love to drink her blood, but, but in a platonic way? Or, or not platonically, but not sexually. And definitely not to kill or turn her. <sighs> I hate stereotypes. Do you think your blood drinking desires are linked to you wanting to be close and intimate with your crush? in a non-sexual and yet intimate way? <sighs> Probably. I haven't really thought about it beyond screaming internally a whole lot. Well, let's see if we can make any telepaths you made a little more comfortable, shall we? Have you talked to her about any of this? No! How, how would I even go about that? Hey, I want to suck your blood, but not in a sexy way. By the way, want to get dinner? 
Well, maybe not exactly like that, but you're not far off. You may be ace, but you're not a romantic, correct? I think so, yeah. You can very much still have strong romantic feelings for others you know. That doesn't need to conflict with your asexuality. Despite what modern culture would tell you, sex and love aren't inherently linked. I guess. Blood drinking may have become sexualized by many, but it doesn't mean every vampire views it that way. It's about food, comfort, pleasure, whatever you want. You can decide what it means for you. I wish more people thought like you, doctor. Are you worried your best friend doesn't? She clearly has no problem with vampires if you two are so close. But what if she actually does? What if she says no and and then never talks to me again? Ava, that's the anxiety we all face when revealing our feelings to someone we care about. I'm sure she cares about you a great deal. And if she does secretly hate vampires, wouldn't you rather know? My point is you shouldn't let your fears stop you from being honest with the people you love. You are much more normal than you realise. Thanks. I actually really needed to hear that. (laughs) Of course. We all do, sometimes. I think I'm going to tell her. You're right. I can't keep letting my anxiety get in the way. Remember to explain your feelings clearly, and I know you'll do fine. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Ava. I wish you all the best and thanks for the call. I think it's good to repeat it. Relationships aren't just about sex. Relationships are about what is meaningful to you. Not everyone has a sex drive, but everyone has the right to be in a relationship if that's what they want. That about wraps things up for this week. I'd like to thank Avery, Hava and Ava for their calls tonight. And as always, thanks to Shannon Forth, our producer. I'm Dr. Olivia Seabrook. This has been Supernatural Sexuality. I hope you've found something in our show tonight and I hope your relationships find their way. See you next week. Supernatural Sexuality with Dr. Seabrook was created by Lee Davis Thalborn and produced by Passive Vez Productions. Dr. Olivia Seabrook is voiced by Mama Boho. Avery was voiced by Rowan Quinn with the call written by Lee Davis Thalborn. Harvard was voiced by Speech to Go Online's Ravina Voice, with the call written by Hannah Aroney. And Ava was voiced by Rory Eggleston, with the call written by Sav Davidson. The voice of the Oz Ethereal Network is Lee Davis Thalborn. If you like our show and want to support us, consider backing us on Patreon. We do our best not only to create a high quality show for you, but to pay everyone involved in its production. Your monthly donation will help continue to support great shows like this one. You can become a patron via supersexradio.com slash Patreon. If you're not able to support us financially, consider rating and reviewing us on your platform of choice and spread the word about our show. If you want to learn more about Supernatural Sexuality with Dr. Seabrook, visit our website, supersexradio.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as Supersex Radio, or one word. Up next on the Oz Ethereal Network, enjoy the wacky tales of Farloria's House of Healing in Alba Salix, Royal Physician. Find out more about this great show at albasalix.com.